are tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. Well, black and white sports fans, we're going to be talking about Brittany Griner here in this video. Brittany Griner is making her rounds. I believe she actually has a book she's trying to sell. And we all know that she was actually um, locked up in um, Russian prison for 10 months because Brittany Griner did something stupid. She brought an illegal substance into the country, illegal drug into the country. And they don't play over there in Russia. Brittany Griner knew this. She knew exactly what she was doing. But Brittany Griner thought, hey, I'm Brittany Griner. I can do whatever I want to do. And she, after the round, she found out. And we ended up having to give up a dangerous arms dealer to get her back. Now, she's been talking to the mainstream media, but you know how the mainstream media is, man. They're just going to paint Brittany Griner as a victim. So she actually appeared on uh, Joy Reid's uh, show, The Readout. And of course, uh, Joy Reid is going to um, give softball questions, you know, and um, not really hold Brittany Griner accountable for actions. Joy Reid, of course, is going to play the race card. Of course, uh, Brittany Griner is a lesbian as well. So Joy Reid has to play off of that to paint Brittany Griner as a victim even though Brittany Griner did this herself. Now, at the time when uh, Brittany Griner was actually uh, going into Russia, this was, uh, I believe, just before the uh, the war with uh, Ukraine. OK, now the U.S. government told American citizens don't go to Russia. Brittany Griner did it anyway. And she also brought an illegal substance to as well. Double whammy. That was dumb, man. That was really dumb. But we need to get into this clip, guys, of um, Brittany Griner talking to uh, Joy Reid because, folks, a lot of people believe that Brittany Griner is a man. They believe that. By the way, her quote unquote wife is knocked up right now with a baby. How did that actually happen? Got questions about that. That's all I'm saying. But. Brittany Griner confirms in this interview, man, that the Russians, when they arrested her, they tried to throw her in a men's jail. Just saying, just saying, man, this is hilarious, man. Let's get into this. Make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel, become a channel member, member live stream every single Friday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. We appreciate the support. So here we go, guys. Let's play this clip right now of Joy Reid and Brittany Griner. Here we go. Talk to me about that moment when you realized that those cartridges had accidentally remained in your bag in the airport <sighs> in Russia. Accidentally. You see Joy Reid here trying to make it seem like this was a mistake accidentally. Nah. It was definitely a free fall. It was just like you ever been so scared? Like something just really like to the core, not, you know, a little ghost scared, but I'm talking like really loved one in danger type fear. That feeling is what went through my whole body. I was I literally saw my life flash before my eyes. I was like, it's over. BG is no more in, in that moment. And I was definitely afraid. Were you sure that? Because, you know, part of this story is the fact that you were a star mm -hmm. in Russia. You were on the ACAT team. You were the star of that team. You know, Russian kids run up yeah, to you and yeah. want your autograph. Did part of you think, no, 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 they're going to they're going to let me go? There was a little hope. But then at the same time, I also understand the relations in between, you know, our countries. And I'm like, mm -mm, then that's yeah. not going to slide. Yeah. And you, you talk about. Not just that, but being forced to sign something. Yeah. Now, you don't speak Russian. Not at all. And no one there spoke English. They finally get somebody from Duty Free, Duty free <laughs> store. to come over Duty and try free. to translate. When you, when you finally relented after being prodded and needled to sign this paper, mm -hmm. what did you think you were signing? 
I had no idea what I was signing. I knew I was signing something that probably needed to be read to me. Uh, yeah. You know, my, my dad's history in law enforcement and all that. So I knew this was something that needed to be explained to me. What am I, by me signing this paper, what am I saying? What am I agreeing to? What yeah. rights am I giving up? It was none of that. It was just a duty-free worker that came over and said, you, you sign here in yeah. very broken English. It wasn't even, you have to sign this paper because this is giving up your rights or you're admitting to None yeah. of that. And I mean, you played um, for seven years mm -hmm. in Russia, so you know a little something about the country. You mm -hmm. felt you had an affinity for the country. But in that moment, as you're thinking, OK, I am going to be arrested, you write about your arrest and mm -hmm. you're told you're going to be taken to the Kim Ki police station It's a temporary detention center. Um, it's like a county jail. Yes. So now, you know, OK, not only are they arresting me, mm -hmm. but I'm really going to be taken to jail. Yes. Did you think in that moment? I, Brittany Griner, am being taken to jail, or did you think in that moment, wait a minute, I am a black, queer woman in a country in which I am a super minority and not necessarily an embraced minority? Mm -hmm. You see what Joy Reid does, man? This is what Joy Reid does here. Brittany Griner can't take responsibility for her actions just because, you know, she's, um, uh, she's black, she's lesbian. Uh, she's in a foreign country that's uh, mostly white. Stop it. And what in the world is that jail going to be like for me? I was terrified when I was thinking about going to that jail because I was like, what games are, gonna, are they going to play? And I soon found out one of the games on trying to tell me to go into one of the men's cells. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not going in that cell. And then the other guard, <laughs> you know, said something in Russian and shook his hand. And then they they take me to the, the women's side. And I was just like, see it. OK. I'm going to stop it right here real quick. The reason why they tried to put Brittany Griner in a men's cell. Listen to her voice. Listen to Brittany Griner's voice. Her voice is deeper than me. Plus, Brittany Griner is also flat chested. It's extremely flat. Got questions about that, too, man. So. I don't think this was necessarily, you know, them playing games. It was just that, hey, we may not understand what you're actually saying in English, but we know a man's voice when we actually hear it. This is hilarious, man. It's, it's, it's a game. You yeah. Know? And I knew all that was stacked against me. Did you believe that you were targeted deliberately, that people knew who you were, knew that you were landing on that flight and deliberately targeted you? I believe so. Yes, I wholeheartedly believe that it was the whole going through doing the transfer, how I was singled out to come over when there's a flood of people walking through, not being scanned, things not getting searched. And I saw the people that were getting, you know, asked to come to the side. I was like something. There was a tip. Some, I don't know. Something yeah. they knew I was coming through. And when OK, I, I, I'm going to stop right here again, man, because. She's saying that she was targeted, okay? When I went to Mexico and I was actually coming back to the U.S., I had my bads and everything. And uh, before you get on the plane, they do random searches. Nobody was actually uh, getting a search. Then they searched me, okay? They searched my bads. I had nothing to hide. They didn't search me because I'm black. Wasn't because of that, because, of course, you know, that to play the uh, victim over here on uh, Brittany Griner's side. But I wasn't dumb enough to bring an illegal substance into Mexico. I wasn't dumb enough to do that, but Brittany Griner was dumb enough to bring an illegal substance into Russia. Ridiculous. When you got to the jail. Um, you write a lot about the isolation of being mm -hmm. in a cell alone. You'll write about the pain of the ride. I mean, you're a tall, tall person, yes. six, nine, six, yes, nine, six, nine, and trying to fit into a car where they're not concerned about your physical health and your physical safety. I wonder if you think that the people in that jail knew who you were and decided that they were then going to further target you, the bullying. You know, the, it, it was striking to see that you were, to see you write about the way that you were sort of made a spectacle. Yes. Turned into a spectacle. Yes. In your mind, was it simply your identity or do you think we know who this is? We're just going to mock her. They definitely knew who, who I was because I would hear little things like the American, the basketball American. Yeah. And 
it was just I would see the 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 little hole where they could see you. Mm -hmm. They would lift that up all the time, all hours of the night. I would hear it go up and down and snickering and the laughing. And I'm like, okay, I'm I'm the zoo animal today. I'm I'm the zoo animal. They get to come come see. Wow. I think one of the most tragic things um, about the narrative that you wrote is that, you know, you write about that not being the first time that you felt that way. Mm -hmm. Um, You write about being always the tallest, um, about always being different, even growing up. Um, And so it strikes me as doubly tragic to feel, as you said, like the zoo animal, when for you, other than playing basketball and sports getting you out of that feeling just growing up, talk a little bit about that. Uh, Definitely always felt like I was the the outsider. You know, I, I vividly remember like sixth, seventh grade, you know, someone, uh, another girl literally came up to me, touched my whole chest and was like, see, she's not, uh, she's not a girl. Like, okay. She's talking about growing up in Houston. So the kids, and I believe she went to a Nimitz high school out here in Houston. So black people touching her chest, mocking her the same as the Russians, the white Russians, right? Yeah. But however, you know, it's because she's black, right? Yeah. Anyway, the voice being a little bit deeper, the height. Um, I was always the spectacle. I was always the, ooh, look how different you are. Um, and I've always felt that. I mean, I am different. When I walk in a room, mm-hmm. people notice how different I am. And it took me a little bit, but I embraced it. But that moment being in that prison and how they were treating me, it, it took me back to that spectacle of my childhood. I mean, even to the point of essentially threatening to put you in the madhouse. Yes. Um, trying to force you to admit that you're a drug addict, using all the stereotypes of a black person, that you must be a drug addict, asking when did you decide you were gay and mm-hmm. decide that you were gay and trying to sort of, you know, needle you in that way. Yeah, it was so great. I was like, I didn't decide, you know, uh, that I was gay. Like, I, I knew this. And when I said it and it was translated to them, you could just see their faces like, what? Like, no, that's not right. When did you choose? You know, when did you start having sick thoughts? And I said, I never started having sick thoughts. Um, and then being told that they're going to throw me in basically the, the madhouse if I didn't admit to my guilt. Take me back um, before <laughs> that, is, because wow. you had to have obviously developed some skills growing up mm-hmm. in dealing with bullying. And as somebody who has dealt with bullying and, you know, and, and understands that on some level as well. Um, sports and athletics does actually help a lot. It does. It gives you something for people to focus on being a Mm -hmm. class clown a little bit. You write about Mm -hmm. making people laugh with you rather than at you. I think a lot of people who've been bullied can relate to that. Talk about some of the skills you had to develop growing up in order to deal with that. I mean, getting a a thick skin, uh, definitely, uh, develop a thick skin, just going through all that. And then when I found sports, it gave me a purpose. Like instead of acting out and trying to get people to like me, I was able to channel that channel that into my performance on the court. And it was crazy. I always talk about I became popular when I started playing basketball. You know, now they I can be accepted because I'm doing this this cool thing on the court. But when I really felt the acceptance is when they got to know me and they were like, oh, BG, like, like, you're really cool. Like, oh, or like I can relate to you, you know, more. And that's when I really felt the genuine like acceptance. Yeah, I I felt it a little bit. Of course, you know, I'm young and I felt the stardom a little bit. I'm like, finally. Yeah, but it wasn't. Finally, until they got to know me. And then you found love. I did. Rel in the book, Sherelle. Yes. Because the other thing that obviously got you through really Mm -hmm. what was torment and and being tormented. um, And in this case, by yourself, this is before Mm -hmm. you had anyone with you. It was Sherelle. It was her faith. um, And it was knowing that she was there um, that got you through it. But initially, you desperately were trying to get in touch with her. Mm -hmm. You desperately were sending these text messages, so pick many. up the phone. It was two in the morning. Talk about being without her in that moment. I was searching for her so hard. Like I said, I was sending message, calling message, but it, it was the wee hours. We, I had did this flight so many times that, you know, she was probably, she was still asleep and waiting for me to be on my next flight. And when I finally got her on the, got, got to her, it was a little bit of relief because I know someone that loves me knows exactly what's going on where I'm at. Um, she can start rallying the troops to figure out the next course of action plan. Okay, so you guys see that right there, man. That is hilarious, man. 
the Russians tried to throw Brittany Griner into a men's jail cell. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. I believe, honestly, that probably would have happened here because I'm pretty sure people here got questions, too. We know that, man. ESPN put something up on uh, Brittany Griner on um, on ads and everybody was saying that she was a man. So I'm not surprised that the Russians tried to throw her into a men's jail cell. Not surprised. <laughs> man, that is wild right there. But that's just my thoughts on this. What do you guys think of this? Black and white sports fans, let us know what you think about all this in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.